All right, Uma Faikant. Um, recently, uh, a gentleman asked me, uh, he said that some of the information I gave as to what things um, didn't work in, uh, in street confrontations, uh, he said the information was good, <clears throat> but he said now it's time to tell the people what does work, all right? He said, again, the information that I gave as far as what doesn't work in street confrontations or what's less likely to work, he said was good and he valued the information, got a lot from it. Uh, but he thought now it was time for me to tell people what does work. And he's right. He said that in good taste and he's 100% right. In this video, I'm going to give you some information uh, that I almost never see in self-defense videos. And for me, it is the litmus test. It is the litmus test for people who teach self-defense. If you do not understand this concept or this reality that I'm going to share with you in this video, then whatever else you're doing, okay, is going to be lacking. All right? I almost never see it. In fact, I can say I don't see it, period. But I'm sure, I, since I don't watch every video on YouTube, don't, simply don't have the time nor the desire, I will say that most people don't. But I've never seen it. Here's a fact. Most people, even at the highest levels, who teach self-defense, do not talk about the influence of drugs and alcohol. The influence of drugs and and alcohol in street situations okay I almost never see it now some of you might be thinking oh well you know what that's not that big of a deal no it is it is the influence of drugs and alcohol make many times the hardest punch totally it goes totally unnoticed it's just not that big of a deal there's a motorcycle outside hopefully you can hear me all right and this is a very serious situation you have seen people who are drunk walk right in to the fray, right into punches, all right, that would knock out, knock them out if they were sober, and they simply keep going, all right? This is why the stopping power of knife wounds, even the stopping power of bullets, let alone the stopping power of punches and kicks, can be over, can be actually exaggerated. No such thing as being over exaggerated. If it's, if it's exaggerated, it's, it's over. But can be exaggerated. Listen to this, and I want you to listen clearly, people, because if you were dealing with self defense, if you were talking, if you want to talk honestly about violent confrontations, you have to understand the issue and the effect that drugs and alcohol has on people and how that plays out in violent situations and how it can render all of your training, all of your training, your kicking, your punching, your elbows, your headbutts can render it almost useless. Okay? Here we go. When you are dealing with someone who has a, a immunity to pain, then you need to specify, you need to be more specific as to what techniques you are going to use. Because many of the techniques that would stop someone or would, or, would, um, or would get someone thinking or would discourage someone when they're sober will not discourage them if they're on drugs or if they've been drinking. And here's the kicker. In a violent situation, at least one person is always under the influence of a chemical substance. In a violent situation, in every violent situation, not some. I'm not going to post a video down the road and say, okay, I meant to say some. In every violent situation, at least one person, and most of the time two at some point, but always one person, at least one party in that violent situation is, and sometimes even in sports, is under the influence of a controlled chemical substance and it's a shame that more self-defense instructors do not teach that and most self-defense videos do not have that on YouTube okay before I tell you what this chemical substance is 
that everyone, at least one person in every violent situation is on and is being influenced by, all right, I'm going to tell you this. You have some chemical substances and drugs that are synthetic, and then you have some that are natural. You have some that we take from external sources, and you have some that our bodies naturally generate. You may know where I'm going with this, all right? A drug called epinephrine, epinephrine is a drug that we produce ourselves. Our body produce it, produces it ourselves and is better known as adrenaline, okay? This needs to be taken very seriously because that is a chemical. Many times we think only chemi the only chemicals that really are, we can call chemicals are chemicals that we take externally from external sources or they're synthetically produced. No. Epinephrine, better known as adrenaline, all right, is a drug. It is a chemical that we naturally produce. And what that tells you is, is that if you add cocaine, if you add heroin, if you add um, uh, uh, um, uh, alcohol, you, you, then that means everybody, all right? But if you take those things away, the fact of the matter is, is the whole flight, fight or flight, the whole fight or flight reaction that we have in a violent situation, either you fight, you get violent, or you run away, that is produced by epinephrine, better known as adrenaline, and that is a chemical substance. In every single, not some, in every single violent confrontation, at least one individual is under the influence of a chemical substance, and usually it's two, all right? How powerful is epinephrine? How powerful is this adrenaline that you naturally produce when you are in a violent situation, and that person who you think you're going to knock out or you're going to hurt with your punches, what, what does that do? How strong is that? I will tell you. Adrenaline is the single biggest reason why people can be stabbed and not know it. Adrenaline is the single biggest reason why a person can be shot and not know it. Adrenaline is the single biggest reason why a person's intestines can be seeping out from their stomach or their brain can be seeping out from their skull and they don't know it. That's how powerful it is. So when you were talking about, when you were talking about self-defense, you have to understand that what you do in training is not going to have the same effect in a fight because you are not putting in, you are not factoring in the real fact of in every violent situation, at least one person is under the influence of a chemical substance. Yes, we produce it naturally, but it is a chemical substance. And it is so powerful that if you are engaging in a sport and you take it from external sources, it is so powerful, you can be suspended. That's how powerful it is, but your body produces it. Just because your body naturally produces it does not mean that it is not as vital and it is not as powerful. Again, adrenaline is the single biggest reason why people have been stabbed, even me. When I was 15 and I was stabbed in the arm, I didn't know it. Until the warmth of the blood, I felt the warmth of the blood. My brother, when he was in the United States Army, he was stabbed in the stomach. And he did not even know he was stabbed in the stomach until afterwards he was talk, thinking about being jumped. And he thought it was peculiar. He thought it was peculiar that someone had actually body punched him, hit him in the body while they were jumping him. And he said, what person punches you in the body when, you know, when they're jumping you, when you're getting jumped by a couple guys? This guy punched me in the body. All of a sudden he looks down where he got punched, where he thought he got punched, and he saw that he had been stabbed in his stomach. Okay? This is adrenaline. This is how adrenaline works, okay? So you have to understand that, that you can take heroin and you can throw that out. You can take cocaine, you can throw that out. You can take liquor and throw that out. And it still has to be understood by you. If you want to really take your self-defense skills to the highest level, it has to be understood by you. And you self-defense instructors, you have got to come to grips with this. You have got to do your research. If you don't do that, then you are leaving a lot on the table and actually you are betraying your clients, uh, your clients slash students. Okay? Adrenaline, 
Epinephrine is a natural chemical substance that we produce and it is the number one reason why people can have their brains pouring out of their skull and they don't know it or their intestines coming out of their stomach and they don't know it or how people can be shot and not know they're shot or stabbed and not know they're stabbed and this happens regularly you can look at the news and this happens regularly the reason for that is adrenaline Okay, so there are techniques that you have to work on and you have to work on techniques that actually cause enough pain to get through that chemical, that chemical substance and the influence of that chemical substance. Now, in the future, we'll be talking more about what techniques actually work that I have seen work myself, that I have observed work myself and techniques that don't work. All right. But I do want to say this. When we are talking about punching and we are talking about punching people, we may knock them out with punches. We may knock them out with elbows. We may knock them out with knees. But that does not mean that those particular blows actually cause as much pain as other, as other uh, methods that can be used. You can knock out someone with a punch, a knee, or an elbow. But those, understand, are blunt objects. Now, most people will not say this, but one reason why punches don't hurt people as much is because it's a blunt object. If you were hitting someone with your knuckles with a vertical fist, unless you were using your first two knuckles, which are fairly sharp, you are not really going to cause a great deal of pain. You may stun someone, but you may not cause a great deal of pain. You may knock them out, but it won't be a great deal of pain. If you hit someone with just your forearm, if you hit them on the, in, on the forehead and not the nose, and not the mouth. It probably will not cause a great deal of pain. Why? Because it's a blunt object. What I'm saying is, is I have personally seen men run through punches by another man, okay, and grab his face and scream when a woman puts her claws, puts her nails into his face. I'm going to repeat that. I have seen men run into the punches of a man run through them hard punches that would knock out anyone else okay under the influence the guy who's running in is under the influence whether it's adrenaline or alcohol or cocaine he's under the influence all right and he runs through those punches only to keep punching himself but that same man will grab his face in pain and scream if a woman digs her nails into his face why because the skin has pain receptors it has sensory receptors. And if you can break that skin, if you can break that skin, you're going to cause more pain than if you punch somebody in the head or you elbow somebody in the head or you knee somebody in the head. This is why one of the best techniques you can use, and many people even from my culture, look at it as it's a female thing. They look at it as it's a soft thing. But no real self-defense instructor will tell you that just grabbing the face and twisting it, just grabbing the ear, going behind the ear and raking down, that does more harm to an individual than actually punching them in the forehead. Why? Because unless you're hitting someone with the first two knuckles, the rest of your fist is not sharp. And it's, it's sharp objects that cause the most pain. Blunt objects can knock someone out but it's pressure, okay? So when you were talking about self-defense, you need to understand what causes pain and what causes pain to a person who is under the influence of a chemical substance. And because epinephrine, better known as adrenaline, is a chemical substance, in every violent situation, chemical substances are intact. In every violent situation, chemical substances do play a part, okay? This, if you want to know about real self-defense, you want to real, get, get real information, I'm giving you real information. You have to understand that your punching and your kicking, those things that you do in training, will quite likely not have the same effect in a real fight. And the reason is, is because in every violent situation, always, not sometimes, always, a chemical substance is always in play. And that chemical substance, adrenaline, again, I hate to be redundant, but I want you to understand because it happens. 
That chemical substance is so strong that if you took it from external sources, you would be banned, quite possibly banned from a sport. Because that chemical substance that you naturally have secreted from your glands, that you naturally produce yourself, makes people, people get shot and don't know it, stabbed, don't know it, brain seeping out from their skull, don't know it, intestines seeping out from their stomach and don't know it, and it's not something that is rare. It is not something that you just see on YouTube. It's not something that's legendary that you read about. It happens every day when an individual does not know how badly hurt they are or if they are hurt at all, and that is because of that chemical substance, adrenaline. If you're going to understand self-defense, you have to understand the usage of the, the, uh, the influence of chemical substances and how to best fight a person who has an immunity to the average uh, level of pain that a person would succumb to if they were sober. All right. So there you go. That's a lesson on self-defense. And like that gentleman said, we will start giving you some things that actually work. Uma fight camp, save Carmen. Train hard, train smart. See you next video.